We have with us uh, Dr. Denny Soyafat Angus, who is the presiding officer at the Tobago House of Assembly. She is joining us via Skype. Good morning, uh, Dr. Angus. Good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. How are you this morning? I am good, thank you. I know you recently returned from the Our Time to Catalyze Change Symposium in New York. Can you tell us about that? Yes, it's the CSW 62, or the Commission on the Status of Women, uh, 62 conference at the United Nations. And it was quite uh, a very interesting and um, enlightening time for me being there, attending many of the meetings that they had from those at the governmental level to those at the uh, NGO level. I was uh, invited by the network of NGOs of Trinidad and Tobago for the advancement of women. And so I attended alongside them to many of the um, non-governmental organizational meetings that you had, which were running parallel uh, to some of the ministerial meetings. And I say that it was quite enlightening because it brought you face to face with the challenges of women across the world, uh, some that you could identify with, some that you were even uh, perhaps surprised that they were still occurring. Um, and yet it brought home the appreciation for how far we have come as a country in terms of the advancement of women. It also highlighted the fact that uh, even though we have come this far, we still continue to have too many crimes against women. And we have seen a state of you know, increased crimes. And additionally, the fact that even though we have had a number of firsts, and uh, perhaps I need to pause and, and congratulate uh, Her Excellency Paula May Weeks uh, for being the first woman to be inaugurated in the position of president uh, in the country. And so whilst we continue to celebrate first like that, uh, we still recognize that there's, there's a lot more work to be done in terms of ensuring that women can meet their true potential and can achieve their purpose in this life. Yeah. So what do you suggest we do as a people to ensure that violence against women and the, the, the negativity surrounding women are something that is no longer there? Well, I always believe that we have to start within our homes. That is the first base. All of us as parents, and I'm not just saying as mothers, I'm saying as parents, all of us as parents need to place emphasis on the awareness of the challenges uh, in terms of uh, violence against women and to be able to uh, bring up our girls to understand that they do have rights and it is important for them to work towards achieving their potential. It is important for us to uh, let our young boys in the homes know that respect for women is important. In fact, respect for any human life is very important, but more so as a woman, and that they should aspire to treat women the way that they would want their brother, their, their sisters treated and their mothers treated. And therefore, we have to start or, or we have to uh, strengthen um, the way we treat with uh, those issues within the homes and then from the homes within the schools. Uh, the awareness, the sensitization, the, the strengthening perhaps of the counseling and the uh, early identification of traits within our, our, our young people attending schools. Yeah. So and you from there, of course, also um, attacking it from the uh, adult level. Yeah. You went to this uh, symposium in New York, <coughs> and you would have met people from other countries as well. Yes. Were you able to, yes. what do you think, or did you get anything that 
other countries are doing that we in Trinidad and Tobago can adopt? Of course. Um, it was interesting, and there were so many uh, that we attended, but I, I would name a few that um, I felt was important. The uh, St. Lucian experience, they actually spoke about uh, the use of sagasam and that they have uh, been able to uh, successfully convert sagasam seaweed into the uh, fertilizers, that organic fertilizer that can be used. And there is a company there now doing it and looking towards uh, export. And I think those are lessons that we can probably learn from because in Tobago, and I know uh, by extension in Trinidad, the sagasam has been a uh, bugbear to us. And perhaps we need to seek ways of converting what is an irritant into something of an opportunity. Uh, additionally, I was very proud of some of the work that our persons who represented Trinidad, a young woman who represented Trinidad and were sharing their experiences, I was also quite impressed with what they were doing. And I think that is where I got the appreciation for, you know, sometimes we do things and we don't share them enough in our own country. And we lose hope, we lose energy because we, we don't hear enough of the good things coming out. And they were able to share, uh, take for instance, there is this uh, new app coming out for pregnant women, I believe called uh, Hip TT. Uh, there is another program where uh, this young woman has brought the persons within the creative sector together and attempting to uh, help them to, to sell their products. And uh, <clears throat> of course in the media, we had a young woman talking about the ch challenges of being in the media and how she has surmounted those challenges. And then you had uh, someone talking about the environment. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but I think all of those, it's important for us to uh, listen to ourselves and to renew our commitment to furthering the cause and be re-energized by what we're doing and know that the journey is not over, that we must continue to push. And so take, for instance, in Tobago for the International Women's Day, the, being part of the Assembly Legislature, we launched the initiative this March of highlighting women in politics. Because women in politics, it has not been an easy road for women. There are many more challenges. Uh, and so we have had a number of women who have surmounted those challenges and have the, had the courage to push forward and to achieve in their areas. And this year, we highlighted the uh, first presiding officer, who was a woman, woman Anne Mitchell Gift. We spoke about, uh, we had um, Miss... Uh, uh, Cynthia Alfred, who was the first woman to be uh, the deputy uh, chief secretary. And then we also had Deborah Moore Miggins, who was the first woman in the position of minority leader in the Tobago House of Assembly. And so we had interviews with them, which we aired, and uh, hope that other women out there were inspired and continue to be inspired by the work that they have done understanding the challenges that they had to surmount, and therefore um, knowing that the road will not be easy, but we will continue to work. You talk about women in politics, and you yourself a female in politics, and you are the presiding officer at the Tobago House of Assembly. How has that experience been for you? It has been quite a, an interesting and exciting one. It has been a new experience and therefore where you have uh, something new it's exciting to work with. I think that at this point uh, being at the, uh, the, the threshold of it, Tobago's increasing autonomy there's a lot more work for the assembly legislature to do in terms of preparing itself uh, for that role 
and that I have looked forward to with great excitement in terms of uh, working along with staff to create outreach programs to sensitize the public to the importance of, of them uh, embracing the, the legislature, them understanding what debates take place within the legislature, to encouraging more young people to get involved in debating and to hone their skills. Because if we are to, I know that uh, one of the areas within the Tobago Autonomy Bill has to do with having a people's house. And therefore, if we are to have a second house, then we must prepare uh, persons out there to have the capacity and the skill to, be, uh, to debate, to have the confidence to even want to get involved. And therefore, those are some of the initiatives that we are taking on. Uh, so the, uh, within, on, in fact, this Wednesday, we, in collaboration with the, the health sector in, in Tobago, we are having the um, senior citizens debate. So a number of senior citizens are coming in on Wednesday at 1.30 p.m. to uh, debate on a motion of their choice. And uh, subsequent to that, even though we've had a youth debate, we will be adding another youth debate uh, to ensure that, again, we get the general public involved, that it is not just once a month that the house will be used, but we increase the number of times that uh, the house will be used. We hope to continue our, uh, our, our training program where we take young people to visit uh, parliaments internationally. Last year we visited, they visited the United Kingdom and also Scotland. And so this year we hope that we can continue with that initiative because we saw the, the confidence rise within the young people who, after coming back from that, uh, that initiative, that venture, and at Christmas time during the debate, we certainly saw an, incre an improvement in the quality of the, de the debating skills uh, that they, they displayed then. And with all of these initiatives to help young people, what do you want to see from them, the young people themselves? Because right now, you know, there, there are conflicting reports. You can say that, you know, Tobagonians are suffering. Then you hear some people saying they're not suffering. So nobody knows what is really happening unless you're there. I think it's important for young people to get involved. If you look at what is happening across the world and even within the U.S. where you have... Uh, literally children who are marching for, for their lives, who are marching against uh, guns, who are saying enough is enough because we, our life is important and we feel that gun control is an issue that must be taken seriously and a stand must be made. And in fact, some of them have threatened the fact that, you know, one young person said, in seven short years, I too will be part of uh, the voters list. And therefore, it's never too early for young people to get involved. Become aware of the issues, understand the issues, and that is when you can make an informed decision about where you want to go with your life, where you expect your country to go. And, uh, and it's when we work together like that uh, that we can, you know, have a predictable way forward for the country and improving the quality of lives across the island and by extension the country. And it is something that I'm sure Tobagonians would be happy to hear that there are initiatives being put in place to ensure that, you know, young people are given an opportunity because a lot of times, you know, they say young people are not being given an opportunity. So this is something that I'm sure that Tobagonians would welcome. So. Dr. Angus, what message would you give to Begonians on the heels of International Women's Day, which took place on March 8th, and moving forward? We have to work together. I have the saying that, you know, no man is an island, and no person can do it alone. We have to work together. We have to come up with the strategies. We have to be able to 
uh, be persistent. And uh, yes, the struggle is real, but sometimes it is through the struggle that we grow and we develop. And certainly, Tobagonians have been known for their resilience because of the struggles that we go through from time to time. Uh, so the only way we will get through it is to continue working together, understanding that at the end of the day, we are Tobagonians, we live on the island, and uh, come what we, come what me, we must survive and we must continue to develop. Yeah. Only together we will be able to do it. Yeah. And Dr. Angus, I know, uh, but I have to ask this question, you know, how is it for Tobagonians right now with all of the issues facing the uh, air bridge and the sea bridge? Well, it has been a challenge. It has been a significant challenge on the island, uh, individually, across sectors, for businesses. I don't think we can deny the challenge. Um, I think anyone who travels the air bridge and the sea bridge will have at, at some point experienced uh, the challenge in itself. I mean, I returned on Saturday night and I had to end up overnighting in Trinidad after coming in on a late flight and taking a very, in fact, the first flight in the morning because uh, there were no later flights to travel. Mm -hmm. um, but within it, we know that there's a promise of a new airport coming, of a new uh, ferry, ferry uh, that is on its way, and we continue to pray that uh, the issues will be fixed in a very timely manner and hope that it will be done uh, very quickly. So Tobagonians can expect some sort of relief when it comes to that, hopefully very soon. Right. Yes, uh, according to the, the government statements, we, we are hoping that the recent statements made by the government, that we will be uh, having these issues fixed shortly. All right, well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Denny Soyafat Angus, the presiding officer at the Tobago House of Assembly, for talking to us about her experience as a woman and also the 62nd session of the UN Commission on the Status of Women, which took place recently, and also giving us an update as to what is happening in Tobago, telling us, you know, the, the, the struggles that Tobagonians are facing, but she's hoping that things get easier in the near future.